This will be a full video tutorial where I'm gonna teach you step by step how to publish a library on a Maven Central using the new Sonatype Central platform. There are uh, quite a lot uh, outdated information on this uh, subject circling around the internet. I've spent days uh, researching until I figured out the best way to do it. And I'm gonna show you right now. The first step is to sign in and verify the namespace that you should use for your libraries. The namespace is basically that unique name that comes before the name of your library. I'm using a Google provider to create an account and sign in on this platform by the way. After you sign in, you can click on the profile icon and then view namespace option. The two most uh, common ways for uh, verifying the namespace are by using your uh, GitHub profile or your own domain name, if you of course already have one. I have verified both, but in this video I will show you how to verify the namespace for a uh, GitHub only. The link that points to the official documentation that teaches you how to properly do it with your own domain name will be available down in the video description. So, click Add Namespace button. A new window will appear where you need to type io.github.youractualusername. You can view your GitHub username by opening a profile page on GitHub. So just copy that username, go back and paste it here. After that, you will see here some random generated number that you can copy. Then, go back to the GitHub profile, go to the repositories and click a new button. Now, as a repository name, paste that randomly generated string that you have copied earlier. Make sure that this repository is marked as a public and then go below and click create repository button. Great! Afterwards, go back to the Sonatype Central platform and click Verify a Namespace button. This verification process is quite fast in most cases and you can go back here after a few minutes and refresh the page. I have already verified my namespaces here, so I'm gonna skip this step. But anyhow, after the namespace is verified, you can delete that random repository from your GitHub. Perfect, we have successfully verified the namespace. The next step is to set up a GPG key, which will be used to sign in your artifacts on a Maven Central repository. That's one of the requirements for publishing your library, by the way. First, you need to make sure to download a GPG binary. You can do it from the official website, or you can use your package manager to do it. In this case, I'm using a Homebrew package manager, and if you don't have it, you can visit their official website and uh, download it. After that, open up the terminal and uh, type brew space install space gpg. After that, let's generate the uh, keys by using this command gpg space two forward slashes full forward slash gen forward slash key. Wait a little bit and then choose an algorithm, RSA in this case. The key size can be for example 4096. For the validity period I will choose 20 years. So type 20 Y. Next you need to enter your real name as well as the email address. For the comment you can write anything you want or you can skip it by pressing enter. Finally, confirm the enter details. Great! Now we need to set up a password for this uh, key. It will be used as an extra security layer to encrypt the private key on your machine. Then you also need to repeat this uh, password once again and uh, you're good to go. You can now type the command gpg space two forward slashes list forward slash keys to see all your uh, created keys. In this case, now I have two of them. But nevertheless, you will see here only one. Take a note of the last eight characters of your GPG public key ID, as they will be required later. 
To allow others to verify your files, you need to distribute your public key to a key server. So, let's type this command to push your public key. This command will make your public key available to other who wish to verify files signed with your key. So, type gpg space 2 forward slashes key server space keyserver.ubuntu.com space 2 forward slashes send forward slash keys and then your gpg public key ID. If you can't access this uh, Ubuntu key server for some reason, then try using uh, keys.opengpg.org instead. Great! If you have used uh, keys.opengpg.org, then you should receive an uh, email address to confirm your identity information regarding the public key. You can now open up that uh, link from that uh, email just to confirm those uh, information. After that, you will receive another email that you have successfully verified an email or identity for that uh, public key. Next, we need to generate a, a key ring a GPG file that uh, will be used to sign our artifacts. So, first, let's uh, export the private key in a form of a string with this command gpg space 2 forward slashes armor space 2 forward slashes export forward slash secret forward slash keys and then your actual gpg public key after that add this a symbol then a space pb copy with this command the private key will be located in your clipboard which means now we can paste it afterwards we need to add one more command echo then a two double quotes and within those double quotes, we need to paste our actual uh, private key, which is now located in our clipboard. Here, in this command, we also need to specify the actual path where uh, we're gonna generate this uh, keyring file. This command will create a gpg keyring file named mysecring.jpg. In your home directory, of course. You can also manually verify that this actual file has been created. Great! The next uh, step, uh, we need to create uh, the actual library that uh, we want to publish. This will be a rather a simple KMP library that uh, will allow us to open up the web browser on uh, both Android and iOS. And uh, to generate a basic uh, KMP library template, we're gonna use a KMP wizard. So, let's open up uh, kmp.jetbrains.com. And from here, we're gonna scroll down below until we find that uh, library template, which uh, we're going to download right now. Then, be sure to extract that uh, zip file and uh, you're good to go. Once we download the template, we can also rename it differently. Then, we can use Android Studio to open up this project. Open up the settings Gradle file so that we can change the name of this project uh, here as well. Great! Now, sync the project and we can rename this uh, module as well. This is how the project uh, level Gradle build file will look like. We have uh, three plugins here. In the version catalog file, we can update the Kotlin version and uh, sync the project. If you check the module directory, you can see that we are targeting uh, not just uh, Android and iOS, but a uh, desktop and a uh, JVM. So, open up the module's uh, Gradle build file and uh, remove uh, those uh, unnecessary targets. After that, sync the project and you will be able to remove uh, those uh, target directories that uh, we no longer need. For the simplicity of this uh, project, I will also remove uh, those uh, test uh, source sets. If you cannot remove them directly from the project view, one way would be to open up the project files and then manually delete uh, those directories. Go back to the project and uh, they will be removed. Perfect. Next, in the Android block of the Gradle build file, we can modify the namespace to be the same one that we have uh, verified on the central Sonatype platform. We can also modify those uh, iOS target environments so that we can include this uh, module for the iOS part uh, as well. Here, be sure to set the name of this uh, base name 
the same as our module name. Now sync the project. Next, we can also remove those uh, sample classes that uh, were generated with this uh, project. Select the file from uh, each one of those uh, source sets and delete them. So now we can focus on uh, implementing our own library. Since uh, this library will allow us to open up a web browser on uh, both Android and iOS, I'm gonna add uh, two extra dependencies for the Android main source set. The first one, Android X Startup, which we're gonna use to provide a context object for the Android part. You'll see about that later. And the second one, to trigger a web browser on an Android platform. For a triggering a browser on an iOS, we don't need any extra dependency. You can now press here Alt or Command plus Enter to move those dependencies in the version catalog file. While we are here, let's remove this uh, unused dependency and update the compile SDK number to 34. Finally, create a new Kotlin file in the common main. Here we need to define an expected behavior. This will be a simple function that uh, should open up a web browser and for example return a boolean value. Now, press Alt or Command plus Enter to automatically add an actual declaration in the selected source sets, in this case Android and iOS. First, let's uh, handle the iOS platform. Here, as you can see, I'm using an existing APIs that uh, already exist for the Kotlin native. And this is how this uh, function will look like for the iOS platform. Next, open up the Android source set and implement this uh, same function for an Android platform now. You can see that uh, we do need to provide a context object. That uh, object exists only for the Android platform, which is why we cannot pass it as a parameter to this function. Instead, we will utilize this uh, Android X uh, startup dependency to provide this uh, context object. So, let's create here a new Kotlin file and implement the logic to provide the context. Besides that, we also need an Android manifest file to declare this uh, app uh, context initializer as a provider. And that's how we're gonna be able to provide this uh, context to that function. Great! So after we have uh, successfully completed our library, now we need to apply here a new plugin in the module's Gradle build file. Now sync the project, and then, below the Android block, I'm gonna add the Maven Publishing block, where uh, we do need to declare uh, various information about our library, like a group ID, an artifact ID, a, a version of this library, but also some other information as well. Whenever you're updating this uh, library, you need to make sure to increase this uh, version number as well. Below, we can also see some uh, extra information that are required by the Maven repository like the library name, description, year, and the URL. For the URL, you can write the name of the repository that you can upload later. It's not a problem. Now, after that, try rebuilding this project. And if you get a similar error about the test classes, then be sure to add this extra task in the Gradle build file and just rebuild this project again. Now, everything here should work fine. Great. Also, be sure to add the publish library variants function in the Android target block. Sync the project. The last uh, thing that we need to specify is the username and password of our Sonatype central platform, as well as the last 8 characters of our public key ID, then the password that we have used when creating that uh, same key ID, and also that uh, keyring file that uh, has been generated. We need to specify all those information inside the Gradle properties file. And because the information that uh, we need to declare here are considered as a secret, we need to make sure to add this uh, file in the git ignore file so that uh, it doesn't uh, get grabbed by the version control system when we upload this uh, project on a GitHub. To get the path name of the keyring file, just be sure to hold down a command key while this uh, menu is opened and then you'll see here an option to copy the path name. Then go back to the project and uh, paste that path. 
those uh, key names uh, needs to be the same as you can see right here because they are uh, being used by that uh, extra plugin that we have specified in our Gradlebill file. Be sure to add your own uh, password that you have chose before. And if you don't remember the last uh, 8 characters from that uh, public key ID, no worries. We can open up the terminal and write this command to check uh, all our existing keys. Be sure to copy the last 8 characters and uh, paste them here in the project. Perfect. Now comes the part for the username and password of the central Sonatype platform. Go back to the platform and select account from the menu. You will see here a button that says Generate User Token. When you click this button, then a new window will appear where you can copy those credentials. Those credentials will be valid until you click this button again and create new credentials. Be sure to copy them fast because that window will close in one minute. I am not going to write those information here because I am not gonna publish uh, this library since I have already done that yesterday. And once you publish a library, you cannot remove or unpublish it. You can only update it. Anyhow, after you add uh, all those credentials here, open up the terminal and uh, write this command, which will automatically generate and assign all necessary files for this library and immediately upload them in the central Sonatai platform. When this uh, process is complete, go back to your platform dashboard and select Deployments from the option menu. There, you will see a new item with an indicator that uh, says Publishing. In my case, you can only see a green success published indicator because I have already published this library yesterday. But in your case, that other indicator will be shown and you need to wait uh, up to a half an hour until your library is uh, successfully published. After that, you can search your library here on the central repository and you will be able to find it. If you want to update this library, just be sure to increase the version number and uh, trigger that uh, same command from the terminal to upload this library again. Lastly, you can upload this library on a GitHub as an open source and uh, share this library artifact with other developers. And now that you have published this uh, KMP library, you can include this uh, library artifact in the common main. And that way, you will be able to use this library from uh, both Android and iOS. Congratulations! If you have any additional questions, feel free to comment down below. And also, don't forget to leave a like if you find this video helpful. Thank you for watching.